item number 552. Perfect and revives the soul. The second one of the Lord will restore 
and his wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just to the joy of heart. But the commandment of the Lord is clear and gives life to God. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they to the Lord. More than the most kind of Sweeter far than honey, when the honey will come. But then also is your servant in life, and in keeping them for a great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? But as he from my secret law, above all, keep your servant from the crouch of sin. Let him not get dominion over me. Then shall I be the whole sound, and innocent of great events. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my beauty. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall ever. Amen. Please stay seated for the reading of the first lesson. First reading, Numbers 11, 46, 20, 16, and 20, 20, 21. In this reading scripture story, the people weep and complain in the wilderness, and the Lord comes to Moses' help by sharing some of the prophet's spirit of leadership with 70 chosen elders and also with two others who were left behind in the camp. This spirit is manifested in temporary spells of ecstatic prophecy. The narrative has several interwoven themes. Once more, God turns away wrath at Israel's lack of trust. This story is meant to show that all leadership derives its authority from Moses' God-given power. That the spirit falls on Eldad and Midad illustrates how it cannot be confined by human appointment. First reading. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also were at the den and said, If only we had meat to eat. Remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing? The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard that the, pe the people weeping throughout their family, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I not conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, as a nurse carries a suckling child, to the land that you promised on, on oath for their, to their ancestors? Where am I to get me to give to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather before me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. Moses so Moses went out and told the people and the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Elkan and Amida are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put the spirit, his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you God. Please stand and let us join by saying the song of Mary. 
found on page 91. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all liberties are all left. The Almighty has done great things for me, and all things is king. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the crowd in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent for it empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he had made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, Our second reading this morning is taken from James, chapter 4. <clears throat> Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, for he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. A warning against judging another. Do not speak against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against another or judges another speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and one judge who is able to save and to destroy. So who then are you to judge your neighbor? Boasting about tomorrow. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears in a, for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast of your ignorance. All such boasting is evil. Anyone who knows that the right thing knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. Warning to rich oppressors. Come now, you rich people, weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotten. Your clothes are moth eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted, and their rust will be evidence against you, and it will eat your flesh like a fire. You have laid up treasures for the last days. Listen, the wages of the laborer who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in pleasure. You have fattened your hearts on the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous one and does not who does not resist you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Sing the song of Simeon, found on page 93. Lord, 
Do not accept your servant free. He loved with me since he left promise. For these are the mind that seek the Savior, whom we have prepared for all the world to see, a light to the light of the nations, and the glory of your people of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith by reciting the Nineteen Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, and our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. Please sit or kneel. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us read responsibly suffrage A, page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in faith. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And God is in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving God among all our nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the Lord of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The colleague of the day, O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure, through Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Call it for Sunday. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A call it for peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I call it for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I call it for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by the Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please let us join by saying that general thanksgiving, page 101. Together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all of your goodness 
blood of your kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, and above all for your measurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray because of the fairness of your mercy, that with a truly thankful heart, we may show forth your presence, not only with our lips, but your heart. By giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory throughout the over ages. Amen. Prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that then two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, Betty is still looking for host and hostess for half hour, not half the hour, excuse me. <laughs> Coffee hour um, for October, and we're going to move on to November, so if you want to be there. Um, if you have, if you uh, made a um, uh, bid on the artwork that's over in the hall, these were, this is the artwork with the artist did on 9-11. If you made a bid, please uh, pay up your bid and uh, pick up your artwork. The um, the fund, the money goes to the general fund. So if you have something over there that you need to pick up, um, please do so. Uh, October 3rd, that's next Sunday, Blessing of the Animals, spread the word. Let people know that we're having this. Uh, we will have one or more impairments at that time. Uh, if you have an animal buried out there, a dog or cat, bird maybe, I don't know, um, please um, put their name in the register. And I think Dottie and Liz have a register at the, in the narthex. Please sign their name. They're, they're trying to do up a, a registry so we'll know who's out there and who they belong to. Um, new parishioners and attendees, be sure you uh, give us your information in the office. The way we communicate is through email, so we do need your email so you'll know what's going on. Um, please get a card from the ushers or uh, call to, uh, Roseanne Monday, Tuesday, or Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Uh, I want to thank Mark Anderson and his fellas for doing such a beautiful shop, job with the walkway around the, the uh, Stations of the Cross. If you haven't been out there to see it, it is beautiful. And they did a wonderful job. Um, there's something else. Someone just told me something that went right on my head. Uh, does anyone think of anything else? The trip for Israel, if you haven't signed up, you better do so quickly. Um, C. Ray with that. Yes. Oh, Oktoberfest. That's what. I'm sorry, Carol. <laughs> it flew up right out of my mind. Oktoberfest. Please spread the word. We need the word out there. We need you tell all your neighbors and friends. Get tickets from Carol or in the office. Um, I don't know, Carol, you're going to pass tickets around so everyone will have some to sell. Um, please see Carol over in the hall uh, at coffee hour. Um, I think that's it. Okay.
we have any visitors? No? Welcome all. Pin number 509. Fundamental to the Hebrew religion. 
It's the covenant word. The covenant was done at weddings. The covenant was done to end a war. The covenant was between sacrifice and God. The smoke would go up to God. And that was a covenant. Our covenant is right here. It's the sacrifice, and it's in the New Testament. See how some of the changes come. We take the, the Old Testament, and we have made it deeper meaning. Let me show you how that happened. Real quickly. This is uh, my own division of the Old Testament. Millie would be proud of me. I tried. I worked real hard on this. There are five books of the Torah. There's five read. There's five books of wisdom and Psalms, the longest book in the uh, Hebrew Bible. There are twelve historic uh, uh, Bible books. That's the blue. There are sixteen prophets in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Testament. You see that? That's the green. And one apocalyptic book. One. Now, here comes, and, and I'm going to get back to frames in a second. Here comes the New Testament after uh, 50 AD, and we've added some books to it. The four Gospels. I call them the cornerstones. The four Gospels. 21 letters. 21 letters of Paul and his associates to the churches. We, we get letters to churches. It's a new form of writing, and it's something that is not in the Hebrew Testament. We have one more historic book, the Acts of the Apostles, and one more apocalyptic book, which is the book of Revelation. So all the books are here, but why are they so different? Well, it's the framework. A, a, a painting has to have a framework. And we see the Bible has uh, a, a, a framework through history. Think of the framework, the gold one, as the Hebrew. What were they looking for? You heard that in one of the readings, too. They wanted a promise. They wanted to end slavery. That's where they were coming from. That's their framework. They worshipped the God up there because they saw his wonders, lightning, thunder, uh, rainbows. That had to come from somebody who was watching out for us. And they prayed and worshipped that way. In a, in a lot of sense, you, you take a look at the language, Hebrew, and sometimes there's a little bit of Aramaic, but heavy stuff in the Psalms. We know some of them were even borrowed from other religions, like the Babylonians. The music was chant and a harp. This is part of the framework. The communication style, very interesting. I have this as a runner would tell you the news. How did you get your news in that Hebrew Testament? A runner, a messenger. You see that coming. And also, who was the guardian of this frame? Moses. You heard that in the reading also. They go to Moses when they've got a problem. They go to Moses when they want an answer. That's the framework of the Hebrew Old Testament. Now, with the New Testament, we have a framework that I call is white. White is another color of the Bible, and it means victory. It's not in the rainbow. How about that? They, they pushed it forward, a deeper meaning. The white is the victory of the cross. Not the death on the cross, but the passion, death, resurrection, and ascension. That brings Christians from the Hebrew Testament into the New Testament, through the Gospels, through the letters, into victory. Take a look at what we did. The language of the New Testament. We've got Hebrew, we've got Greek, Latin, Aramaic, all in this New Testament. The communication style, it went from running to walking. The, the great messages, even look at the, uh, the, the path from Emmaus, the, the two people walking, and they meet Jesus along the way. And they didn't know it till the breaking of the bread. That's kind of a messenger. We see messengers and angels that come to the tomb, that come to Mary. They're more prominent as a figure of a messenger. The white, they're always wearing white. 
Jesus on the Transfiguration. He's bright white because victory, victory is at hand. Think of the terms, of, uh, even the money of the New Testament. It went from trading rocks and trading things in the uh, Hebrew Testament to coins now. But remember, they were Roman coins. And, and Jesus says, you know, give to Caesar what's his. But if you've got a coin that represents your frame, give that to God. I've got, who was the guardian? Who, was, who do you think was the guardian? You've got, of course, Jesus and the apostles. And then you've got Paul. So those people who had intimate contact with Jesus become the guardians of this framework. Where they go to them for answers to questions. Like the, the great question they had coming out of the Hebrew uh, tradition was, do we circumcise now all these new people, these Gentiles, before we allow them to come worship? And the answer came through the apostles, through Paul. Yes, we are open to all peoples. And now we come to the hardest part. The frame for today. This one. It's like if I had mirrors, I would have put them all on there, but it's a little heavy. It's us. We hold the framework for our lives of the New Testament. If we can look to the deeper meanings. Our language is not the same. It's, it's here. It's English, Spanish, 3,300 different languages in this Bible. That's how many different translations there are. Of 3,000. You think in terms of what is the music of today. You've got iPods, you've got Siri. I mean, we've gone way far off chant and all that stuff. Our, our music, our culture. What's a communication style? We sit, we're sitting right now, we sit in front of the TV, we sit when we're on our cell phone, we sit when we're on the computer. We're not running, we're not walking, we're sitting. Hmm. What's our form of money? It's plastic, it's a credit card, it's Bitcoin, which does not even exist, it's a thing in the, in the computers. We have euros, we have different types of payments. How does that fit? into our new framework. And of course, who do we go to for answers besides Father Paul? Uh, who do we go to the church? The church has some answers and the answers when we ask the questions. I gave you each a puzzle piece and I hope you still have it. <laughs> it's my final part here because uh, it's us and each one of you have another piece. Now you've got a Bible at home. I'm sure you do. You probably have a big one. And did you know what it takes to be a bestseller? It's like 5,000, 10,000 issues or something of a book. Do you know how many Bibles are printed each year? 100 million copies of this. 100 million. That's a lot. Is that a bestseller? It would be if people read it. <laughs> and it would be if people understood it. And it's so much to understand. Even I, with all this teaching and all the degrees and everything, it's still, I, I go to a Bible class myself just to hear and understand deeper meanings, meanings that were way in the past come back to me. And I go, well, yeah, I knew that. Well, I'm inviting you people to take your puzzle piece and bring it to Bible class, <laughs> Bible study, or just uh, to the hall. I'm going to be sitting at one of the tables. If you have a question or two, uh, come on, ask me. I'm open for that. If it's about the Bible, that's even great. How about somebody pushing the, should say the marker a little bit? Maybe one of you people watching up there. If we can get ourselves onto a Zoom conference. I like the interaction of Zoom. I don't just like film, and here it is. Uh, and that's one of the classes I take. It's a Zoom class on, on the Bible. If somebody had that, or how about somebody who had an opening, somebody who's up there, uh, for a lunch or breakfast meeting, and we just talk, talk about the Bible. And that would give us an exchange. That would be an opening. I'd be open to that. I'll come to your house. And, you know, 
If you want to make a breakfast, lunch, or dinner, brunch, whatever, uh, call it a Bible brunch. Something, somebody out there is going to have this idea. And that's part of what we need to understand. The deeper meanings, Father doesn't have all day to answer, and neither do I, because you know I can keep talking about the Bible. It's something I just realize is my purpose. And it, it will come to you if this puzzle piece fits. Here's a true story. We were on vacation in Boone, North Carolina, and we were putting together a puzzle, three kids and my wife and I. And we finished the puzzle in three days, except for one piece. And it bugged the heck out of me. We couldn't find it anywhere in the cabin. And I was like, where, where could it be? It's, it's got to be here. We've got to finish this puzzle. And we found it in the baby's high chair under the mat, under the little cushion. <laughs> yeah. So the puzzle piece was there all along, but we didn't find it until we looked for it. And yeah, you know, of course, the last place we looked. Don't, don't you always find things in the last place you look? Yeah. That's my philosophy degree. But the last place you look is where you'll find it. So let this, this piece be part of what's in your wallet. I call it like the summer. What's in your wallet that makes you a Christian? What's in your wallet? What's in your purse? You know, you've got ID, you've got money, you've got this. Now you've got a puzzle piece. It'd be a, a puzzle for maybe that's the clue I need to finish my puzzle about the Bible. My puzzle about something in life. They're there. They're where we will find them. And I'm going to do it backwards. I'm going to conclude with the joke. Father always likes to start with one, but I'm going to conclude. And if Father's listening, it's for you. Of course. Here it comes. What do you call a priest who used to be an attorney? A priest, attorney, what do you call him? Father-in-law. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>
Lord Jesus, looking for rainbows in everyone's face. Amen. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.